Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Before jumping into today's topic, I wanted to make a brief comment. For several videos, this channel has been discussing the claimed image of a black hole in M87. Some people believe that my analysis in these three videos has been unduly harsh, but this is far from the case. No one has perfect knowledge, as I highlighted in the first video. Many seem to underestimate the severe consequences of this shortcoming, but it is more than sufficient on its own to invalidate all future claims of imaging a black hole using radio astronomy. It is impossible to extract an image from a billionth of a data set, no matter how much computing power lays at our disposal. In science, there are error bars, and those apply even in data processing. Furthermore, astrophysics cannot increase angular resolution given grossly undersampled UV space and insufficient signal-to-noise on the longest interferometer baselines. This point was clearly made in the second and third videos. As such, resolution cannot be increased beyond the diffraction limit in the absence of signal-to-noise. Pixels in scientific imaging mean something. They are not just a question of generating pretty pictures. That being said, perhaps it is time to examine some observations that actually have meaning and turn our attention to the Sun. For several years now, many of us have been awaiting results from the Daniel K. Inui Solar Telescope located on the island of Maui in Hawaii. This is now the most powerful solar telescope in the world, boasting a 4.24 meter primary mirror. The telescope obtained its first images in December 2019 and released its first results in January 2020. Its construction will be completed in July, at which time it will be able to capture images in both the visible and the infrared. But prior to discussing these new results, I wanted to pause once more to consider some of the spectacular images already brought to us by the 1 meter Swedish Solar Telescope located on the island of La Palma in Spain. This phenomenal instrument previously held the world record for resolution in solar imaging. I will never forget when I first laid eyes on these images. They literally took my breath away. The new telescope in Hawaii is destined to better its Swedish counterpart by more than a factor of three in resolution. But let us not too hastily move forward. There is still much to learn from the results brought to us by the Swedish Solar Telescope. As a case in point, Consider this small clip, obtained in 2006. Here you see a wonderful presentation of granular motion. I have previously suggested that granules and intergranular lanes constitute type 1 metallic hydrogen, whose appearance is governed by directional spectral emissivity arguments, as you can learn in this video. However, it is evident when examining this clip that bright material is essentially floating on top of the intergranular lanes, as you can see here. The point is that the material appears to be immiscible with the surrounding granules, and that highlights that we are observing two different phases of matter. I have made the point that granules are likely to be constituted from type 1 metallic hydrogen. In fact, this would be a semi-metal, much like graphite. Clearly, this bright material constitutes a different phase. Is it type 2 material, once ejected from sunspots or the solar interior? as I discussed in this paper, or is it chromospheric material which has returned to the solar surface prior to re-entering the solar body? In any case, we are clearly seeing two phases here at the surface of the Sun. First, that associated with the granules and the intergranular lanes, and second, that obtained by the bright points in the intergranular lanes. Now let us turn to a recently released image from the Daniel K. Inui telescope. Again, one observes bright areas of materials floating above the intergranular lanes. However, with more resolution, we now observe structure within this material. This one almost appears as a leaf floating on the sun. Now examine this video. You immediately notice that bright material is essentially immiscible with the surrounding granular matter. Moreover, you will be able to see that some of the bright material can merge with other adjacent bright material. This is highly suggestive that this constitutes a single physical phase which differs from that found in the granules. The only reasonable way to account for all these details is to finally accept that the body of the Sun is comprised of condensed matter. 
we are seeing manifestations of different phases on the surface of the sun, and it is incorrect to keep arguing that gaseous plasmas can lead to such detailed structures. Furthermore, and returning to images of black holes, the condensed nature of the sun destroys all such claims. Black holes cannot exist, and soon enough, astrophysics will be forced to accept this reality. They need only to keep tracking data from the sun, and eventually, logic will prevail. The sun has a real surface, and for that reason, big bangs and black holes will soon assume their rightful place in the dustbin of failed scientific ideas. In the meantime, keep an eye on both the Swedish Solar Telescope and the Daniel K. Inouye Solar Telescope. It is time that we advance scientifically and propel our understanding of the sun into the 21st century. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the video to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.